How's it going guys? Today I'm stoked to film this video because it's been three months since I made the Fire Nation keyboard and you guys seem to really enjoy it. So I think it's finally time for me to make another ATL-18 keyboard and this time it's going to be a water sharp one. So without further ado, let's begin by going through the parts I use for this keyboard. I wanted this keyboard to match the Fire Nation keyboard I built so I bought the KB Fans case once again. But this time I went for a 60% instead of a 68%. This case is also way lighter coming in at only 336 grams because it's made of frosted acrylic rather than aluminium. Then we have the PCB and plate. I also bought both of these from KBD fans because they're fairly priced and easily accessible. The PCB does require soldering and is programmable so I will be doing that later. Now there are hundreds of different mechanical switches out there but there's one that I really like and they are the Duroc linear switches. They have a wide range of color options so I went for the creamy greens because they match the theme of this keyboard. These switches are already pretty smooth out the factory but you know, since I'm paying a premium price for this keyboard, I want it to feel as premium as possible. So I used my KBD fan switch opener to dismantle all the switches and laid all of them out on this transparent lubing station I got. Then I used Crytox 205G0 to lightly lube the switch inner housing and stem to give them that extra smoothness when typing. For an add-on, I also added a thin sheet of rubber called film in between the two halves of the switches before reassembling them. The whole modifying switches process was definitely tedious, but the lubing station helped tremendously throughout the process. It was just way more efficient having all the switches laid out versus lubing them one by one. Once all the switches have been reassembled, I simply snap them onto the plate which is going to keep the switches in place for soldering. Along with the Duroc switches, I also got their screw-in stabilizers. They make little to none rattle noise and they feel quite smooth, but again, just like the switches, I want them to feel as smooth as possible. So I lightly lubed the two ends of the wire with dielectric grease and the sides of the stem with Crytox before assembling them. I learned from experience that you don't really have to put too much lube on these stabilizers or they will become sort of sticky. After that, I screwed on all four of the lube stabilizers onto the PCB with the included screws and o-rings. The plate then sits perfectly on top of the PCB with the pins of the switch sticking out from the bottom. Then, it's finally time for soldering. I had plenty of experience with soldering before so this part didn't really challenge me. However, it's still extremely harmful to breathe in the toxic fumes so I used a mini fan to blow the fumes away from me. After soldering 120 joints, the rest of the process is quite straightforward. Just place the entire unit into the case and screw it on with 6 screws. However, since the case is translucent, I could see the black PCB from the bottom. And uh, that kind of bugged me, so I added a thin sheet of packing foam in the case before screwing them together. Not only does this help make the black PCB less visible, but also helps diffuse the RGB lights underneath the PCB, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. For now, it's time to put on the keycaps. If you're a keyboard enthusiast like me, you're probably wondering, what keycap set is this? And the truth is, this isn't a keycap set. I actually got these keycaps from the Akko Ocean Star keyboard I've reviewed and the only way for you to get these keycaps is if you buy the entire keyboard. But I thought it was worth it because not only do they match the Water Tribe color scheme but they are identical to the keycaps I use for my Fire Nation keyboard but in a different color because the font, texture and material are the same. Honestly, these keycaps cannot be more perfect for this build and I'm extremely happy the way they complement the acrylic case. Just like that, the entire keyboard is complete, and it can be programmed through a configurator called the VIA. Here you can change the function of each key, set different lighting effects, and create your own macros. So I programmed the number row for customizing the RGB lights when I hold down on the FN key. I also programmed this keyboard to be able to switch between desktops using one hand without a trackpad on a Mac. I'm not going to go in details on how I programmed this keyboard because I'll be saving that for another video. All in all, I just love how this keyboard turned out. Every component just complements one another wonderfully and the lube creamy green switches feel buttery smooth. If you're interested, I'll be posting a typing test soon so stay tuned for that. In the meanwhile, go like, comment, subscribe, share, and I'll see you on the next one.